Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about types of inflation. In this video we're going to look at the two main types of inflation in the macro economy. The first we'll look at is demand pull inflation where price rises are generated from the demand side of the economy and secondly we'll concentrate on cost push where uh, inflation is caused mainly by supply side factors and cost structure increasing in the economy. So to start off with, we look at the left hand side. We have a diagram with the price level up on the Y axis for the economy and GDP or income down on the X axis. We have an upward sloping line here, which we will now call a short run aggregate supply curve and this is the total quantity of goods and services that firms produce and sell at any given price level. Uh, the downward sloping line then we will call aggregate demand and this is the total quantity of goods and services demanded at any given price level and this is a downward sloping line. The intersection point between short run aggregate supply and aggregate demand is the equilibrium point where the market's clear and where we have the same aggregate supply level as aggregate demand. From this, we derive a price level, we'll call this P1, and we also derive from here a GDP level, and we'll call this GDP1. So this is the starting point in our economy, and what we will tend to see is sometimes the economy is hit by an external shock. And that shock can be positive in nature in terms of aggregate demand. It may be more positive or optimism from consumers, in which case consumption C might increase and firms might be more optimistic about that purchasing from consumers, so investment might increase. We might have the government spending more money in the economy, fiscal expansion, so government expenditure increases or we may have the general global economy performing well and this uh, economy here is exporting into that, so exports increase. So regardless of the source of the external shock, if it is a positive demand side factor here, what it will cause is the entire aggregate demand curve to shift rightwards. So we can show this on our diagram here. We can shift our aggregate demand curve over to the right as shown we can indicate that rightward shift with a couple of arrows, so that indicates greater uh, spending in the economy. We now move to AD1, and in this case here, the new equilibrium between AD and short run aggregate supply is at a higher point up here. So we now call our initial point A. At point A, the price level is still relatively low, we now have greater spending in the economy aggregate demand. This is putting pressure on the price level in the economy. Inventories are decreasing, firms are experiencing scarcity, in which case they start to increase their price levels. And what happens here is we move initially to point B in the very short term, in the immediate term, and then as time goes by, prices start to rise here and we move up to point C. So point C shows us that the price level has increased, we'll say P2 over here. So price level has gone up, i.e. inflation has been caused. And at the same time in the short run, GDP has increased as well. So GDP goes up to two here. So demand pull inflation is when inflation in a price level is pulled up by extra demand in the economy from aggregate demand shifting right. Over on the left hand side, we have cost push inflation. And over here, we still have our equilibrium point where our short run aggregate supply curve intersects our aggregate demand curve, giving us an initial price level which we call P1, and also giving us our starting GDP level, GDP1. Now, in this situation here, it's slightly different in that the cause of the inflation is coming from the supply side. So there may be a shock in terms of oil prices increasing or general inflation 
pressure put on wages and wages increasing labor union power. In this case, the supply curve will shift backwards to the left. So in this case, decrease in supply shifts the supply curve backwards to the left. Again, what we can do is indicate this with our arrows showing that aggregate supply is shifting leftwards like this. We will call it short run aggregate supply one, indicating a change supply in the economy. And from this, we derive a new equilibrium point. So initially, right straight after this, the immediate point is that there is, in this, in this case, excess demand and a lack of supply in the economy is putting upward pressure on the price level causing us to go from A to B and up to point C. At point C, we see here a new price level of P2, which is higher than our initial one of P1. And we also see in this case here that the GDP level has fallen in this case, so GDP2. And this is a specific case in the economy that we call stagflation. So stagflation here, means that the economy is stagnating, hence the GDP falls. However, there is inflation in that economy as the price level increases. So this is cost push inflation. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.